Yo, real talk, I really believe kids see ghosts. Like, my son every night be in his room talking to somebody who ain't there, and I know it's a fucking ghost, and as long as he don't fuck with me, he can stay. What's going on, everybody? It's the granddad of granddad, Wooly, and you are here again for another edition of Wooly Reviews, Hip Hop Data. We got an album review today. We're going to talk about the brand new album that just fucking dropped. It's number three in the good music medley that Kanye has been dropping all fucking summer, and he's got the homeboy Kid Cudi with him on this one on some collabo shit, so you know we had to talk about it. It's seven songs. As always, and you know what, we just gonna get to it because like, it's been like, it started up here and then it dipped down, so now let's see if these niggas can bring it on back up. These niggas are back, they dropped some new shit, we gonna talk about it, talking about the new album from Kanye West and Kid Cudi under the name Kids See Ghost. And that's true, y'all, like honestly, y'all, I be in there, I'm like, yo, son, who you talking to? He's like, eh, and I'm like, what the fuck is that? Because ain't nobody there, I'm about to call a poltergeist lady, I'm about to call an exorcist preacher, and just get this shit to... Just don't haunt me. Like, I, don't don't make... I be hearing sounds and shit and everything, y'all. My house is haunted. Now, we all know who Kanye West and Kid Cudi are. I'm not gonna waste time on that shit, but this is their first ever official collaboration together. Even though they've been working together for many years, Cudi used to be on good music, then he went off and did his own thing, and he did his own thing, but you know... Sometimes you don't need to do that. So he, they're back together, working together again, and now we're going to see what this is all about with this Kid See Ghost shit. So now let's see if Kid See Ghost is like Casper the Friendly Ghost. You know, that motherfucker was cool as fuck. His uncles were like some bitch niggas, but, I mean, Casper was cool as shit. Or if it's like, you know, a haunting type shit where, like, you're scared and terrified and it's a terrible time and you just want to go home because you don't want to see nothing but these ghosts. I'm haunting. I heard, I heard something, y'all. Let's talk about the shit. Now, when I first popped in this album and I tuned into the production, which is mostly handled by Kanye West as well as some others, I realized that, yo, these niggas been holding out, especially Kanye. This is such a completely different vibe and sound and energy than what we got a week ago from Ye. Ye was so bland and blah and boring, but kids see ghosts from the moment it cuts on is expensive. Explosive, it's psychedelic, it's intense, it's heavy. The production on here is just so much more like, it has so much more of an impact than what Ye did. And I'm like, well, goddamn Kanye, what the fuck? First you get pushing the good shit, and then you save this shit for you and Cuddy. What about you, nigga? He doesn't, he, he's, he's, he's being selfless. That's what he, he's learning new shit. He's learning to not care so much about himself. Or maybe he just thought that shit was good because it wasn't. It was boring, kind of. I'm getting off subject. This is what we're talking about. But the production on here is so goddamn dope. It's so fucking dense. It's heavy. A lot of different crazy samples on here. A lot of crazy effects on here. It's chaotic. It's erratic. Because if you think about it, both Kanye and Kid Cudi both have this thing where they're kind of just going through their own like mental state where they're kind of just all over the place. And it kind of showcases that crashing together production wise on here which is amazing i love the beats on here some of them are very very just intense some of them are very very just laid back some of them are very head naughty and just like straight up hip-hop some of them are very very melodic for cuddy to go and do his singing thing and even Kanye does some singing thing on here as well and it just overall sounds really good the seven song project production wise is really fucking dope it's probably the strongest production out of the three. I, I, you know, I'm going to still give it to Pusha T, but this is a close, close, close second. And I really just like what Kanye did on here. But it wasn't just Kanye on the production. He had Mike Dean up on here as well doing some stuff. Andre 3000 helped with some production. Cuddy helped with some production as well. As well as some other notable names who I got right here because I don't want to fuck it up. Uh, also, Andrew Dawson, Boogs, Dr. Genius, Evan Mast, and Plain Pat. And they all come through and just give, like I said, this amazingly great soundscape for Kanye and Cudi to do their thing over. And it just sounds so good. And when it comes to Kanye and Cudi, I gotta say they overall did a great job on this production. Now, I will say Cudi is the sort of weak link on this project. The thing about Cudi is his singing and his humming and his stuff like that. I can take it here and there. Sometimes it's kind of annoying. And sometimes I really enjoy it. But like on here, it's like he's hit and miss with me on some things he does here. But with Kanye, Kanye is doing a lot better than what he did on Ye. His bar aren't as cringy. He seems to be a little bit more, I guess he seems to be having a little bit more fun with this project. He's giving more clever lines. He's really just more animated on here and you can just feel a better energy coming off of Kanye on this project rather than his last album with the last project he dropped with Jay a week ago. And I'm not writing Cuddy completely off on this project. He does some great performances on here with some great singing vocals on here, some good rapping as well, but there are some moments on here where he kind of just overdoes it or does some unnecessary things with his voice, his humming, his inflections that I just kind of don't care for at times. And when you compare it to Kanye and the production on here, he just comes in in third place, obviously most of the time because he just doesn't give off the same type of intensity or energy 
that Kanye or these beats are giving, and rather he's giving us just that run of the mill cutty that we know about and we are used to. And when it comes to the features on here, there's some features on here. I mean, they all uncredited. Kanye don't want to get no niggas no credit whatsoever. Like, what the fuck, Kanye? Come on, you ain't paying these niggas. I'm just saying. So he's got, hold on, I got to find these niggas because you know they ain't on there, so you got to find them. So he's got. Pusha T, who comes in with a verse in the first song, and he ain't even, like, nobody said nothing about Pusha T being, he just shows up. Pusha T, Ty Dolla Sign, Anthony Hamilton, Most Def, aka Yasin Bey, that's Most Def, nigga. And then Mr. Hudson as well. And they all come through and they do a great job on their features, even though, like I said, they're uncredited. They are a welcome addition to the project, and they really do help accentuate whatever track that they're on. Pusha T has a great verse. Most Def has a great little intro that he does where he does sort of like, you know, his, you know, the standard Most Def intro he does where he just kind of builds up to a song. I love how he's on there. Also, you got great singing vocals from Anthony Hamilton and Ty Dolla Sign who come through and do a great job as well as Mr. Hudson. So all the features on here do their damn thing, but at the same time, we still get that forefront of Cuddy and Kanye, which is really the centerpiece and it stays that way for the most part. And I really enjoyed what overall they did on this project. Now, you notice, nigga, Kanye didn't ruin my top five for the past, like, fucking two weeks. I'm pissed, nigga. Oh, it's whatever. We almost done. Hope, how many more projects this nigga got? Whatever. So, I'm going to just run through these songs real quick, y'all. Real fucking quick. And just give you my quick thoughts on them. So, the first song is Feel the Love. And I love this intro. First of all, it just sets the tone of how much different this project is than anything else we've gotten from this, like, Kanye medley that he's been dropping. The energy on here is fucking dope. Cuddy's vocals on here, his singing vocals are powerful. It really grabs you from the moment that you hear him singing. I can still feel the love. I'm not, I'm not, I tried. I tried, y'all. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to bridge the gap so you can know you heard it, though. But he does a good fucking job. The beat on here is impactful. These hard-hitting drums, these great synths on here. And the only thing about this song that's kind of weird to me is I think it's Cuddy, but after, like, at the end of the song, he comes up with this cat, 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 cat. Rap, whatever the fuck he's doing, but he's doing it on the drums, which is cool. But after like a good 10 seconds, it gets kind of overdone and annoying. So that's the only thing about it. Like I enjoyed it at first, but then I was like, okay, stop, Cuddy, or whatever, whatever the fuck you're doing. And he goes, woo, 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 woo. I don't know what the fuck. He, I don't know if he was having a break. I don't know what the fuck Cuddy was doing. He started off strong, though. But overall, it's a dope song. I really enjoyed it. Pusha T comes through with a dope ass verse. He's still riding that Daytona wave and still killing it. And it's a great. Really dope, really strong intro, so I really enjoyed it. Except for that last part that Cuddy did. Cuddy, you ain't need to do all that extra shit, nigga. You really didn't. The next song, Fire, is a really cool track. Not amazing to me, but I did enjoy it for the most part. I like the beat on here. Hard-hitting drums as well as this really like cool tambourine sound on top of that. And just really just this kind of psychedelic feel with it. Cuddy's doing some singing on here, which really comes off pretty decent for the most part. But overall, the song is just blah. Bland. It's really not that same energy that we got from the first track, but it does keep, you know, a good amount of energy and it does keep the momentum going somewhat throughout the project. So I really like the song. I just didn't love it. I, it was some parts that could have been better to me, but overall, it's just it's a decent song. Keeps the momentum, which is good. But I thought it would have been more fire since it's called fire, but it wasn't that fire. But it was cool. It was like a, it was like a blue fire, blue fire. The next song, Fourth Dimension, is probably my favorite song on here. I love this. This is like the hip hop track, I have to say. The beat on here is fucking dope. It's got this sample from, I guess, I don't know where it's from. It's like an a old Christmas song from like, it sounds like it's from back in the 30s or 40s, but it's just got so chopped up by Kanye. It's dope. It's going, oh, it's got this real cool, just like vocal chop going. Really dope. Hard hitting beat. And it features Louis Prima or Louis Prima who I think does some dialogue or Kanye uses an excerpt at the end of the dialogue that he uses from him. And it comes off really, really dope. And it's just a really, really cool song. And Kanye comes off with a dope verse. It's not cringy. And, you know, he even says, make him say, uh, uh. Like Masterpiece and Rick Ross. Like he kind of like did all that cool thing. I kind of thought it was funny. I like how he did that. And he just comes off with a really, really dope energy. And the song overall was just dope. And I like another thing about the end of the song where the excerpt is. The dude Louis Prima saying like a song only needs to be about two and a half three minutes tops, and the song actually clocks in, I think, at 2.31. So as a smart thing that Kanye did, I like how he kind of did that. It kind of plays off of that. So it's a really dope thing I picked up. But the song overall is really dope, fire, really nice. The next song, Free, Ghost Town Part 2, is the sequel to Ghost Town, which was on the Ye album. And I actually like this song a lot better than the Ghost Town song on Ye. The energy of it is dope. Kanye on here is dope. 
Cuddy on here is fucking dope. The, I love the hook on here where it's like, I feel free. And it's got this really cool, just like reverberated echo around it. The beat on here just hits harder. Everything just sounds great. And the singing vocals from both Kanye and Cuddy come off amazing. I really love this song. I got nothing bad to say about it. It's just a really dope, high energy, really impactful song that really piggybacks off the first Ghost Town and does it even better. So I'm glad that that was on this one because like, I mean, Ghost Town set it up for us to know what this was going to be, but this one came off way, way better. The next song, Reborn, is sort of the Cuddy solo track, and this one's cool. It's like your standard Kid Cuddy song that you would have heard on any Kid Cuddy project in the past, and I can appreciate it. It's a dope song. It's the longest song on the album. It's like five minutes long, and I was like, at, some, at one point, I was like, damn, this song is going on long as fuck. Like, I don't hate the song. It's just, it kind of goes on a little too long for me. Like, it's really dope. The beat on here is cool, but it, it's just nothing really special or amazing and like anything else that we would have heard from a Cuddy project in the past, but it's cool for what it is. Is. I wish we would have got a little something more out of it and it just runs a little too long, but overall it's decent. The next song is Kids Seed Ghosts, which is the title track of the album, and this is really pretty much another situation where the song, to me, is cool. I like it. I can enjoy it and listen to it in the context of the album, but it didn't really wow me. But the beat on here, I think, is the best part about it. It's got this real haunting beat to it with these really, like, kind of rattly, like, percussion on there, which really comes off really, really dope. And then you got, of course, Cuddy with the singing, Kanye with some dope rapping. And overall, it's a solid song, but for the title track, I think it could have been a little bit more impactful. I wish we could have got more out of this song for what it was, but it is what it is, so there you go. I mean, the beat's dope. The beats on here are all fire, y'all. The beats are saving this project, but the delivery of some of the vocals on here are what kind of kind of falters it down, and this is just one of those songs, that, to me, that really just didn't come off amazing 100%. And the last song, Cutty Montage, is a very strong ending. I like the beat on here. Hard-hitting beat, more hip-hop related, but it's got this cool little acoustic guitar on there, which really comes off nice. Cutty does some really nice singing in the beginning, and then Kanye comes through with a very strong, solid verse, and it really just wraps up the whole project nicely with the whole Kids See Ghost theme and you kind of got to hear Kanye talking about kids and people growing up in their environment and just being products of their environment and the negative and the positive things that can happen, which is really dope. And I just think it just ends very strongly. It starts off strong, ends strong, but does have some iffy spots in the middle, which is what kind of holds that project back from being perfect to me. And overall, y'all, this is a pretty dope project. This is the second strongest project that he's dropped out of the three, I have to say, with Kanye. Kids See Ghost came off a lot better than I thought it would. I really didn't have too many high expectations, but Kanye and Cuddy did a really good job. Great beats, great features, great performances from them overall with some misses here and there. More from Cuddy than Kanye, but overall, I enjoyed this project a hell of a lot more than Ye. So my final verdict, I'm not saying that Kanye West and Kid Cudi, Kid C Ghost is an overall very well put together solid project with some great production that's way better than what we got on Ye, as well as some really good performances from both Kanye and Kid Cudi. All I'm saying is that beats on here are dope, Kanye does this thing. Not many cringe-worthy lines on here, or if any at all that I can remember off the top of my head. Cuddy does a good job with the singing and even with some rapping here and there. Even though some of his stuff comes off as just basic and bland and just standard Cuddy, nothing really too crazy. He does have some performances on here that are amazing. This isn't a perfect project. It's not as good as Daytona. Daytona still is at the top of the list, but this one comes in at second. It's way better than Ye, and I enjoyed this shit a lot more than that project. So all I gotta say is that for me, Kanye West in Kid Cudi as Kid C Ghost is not granddad approved, but I will give it a very highly granddad recommended. So go check it out. It's out right now. It gets to very highly because, like I said, the production on here is the shining moment in the entire thing for me. I love the production on here. And for the most part, most of the songs on here, I enjoy. I didn't even give my favorite three now. I think about it, y'all. My favorite three. Hold on. Let me go ahead. Uh, uh, off the fourth dimension. Feel the Love and Cuddy Montage. Those are my favorite three out of the whole seven shit. I had to get that right there for you. But overall, it's a solid project. Nothing mind-blowing or amazing overall, but I do think it was way more enjoyable and way more impactful than what we got from Ye. But Daytona still is at the number one spot. But I got nothing more to say. Kids see Ghost, Kanye, Cuddy. It's very highly granddad recommended. So go listen to the shit right fucking now. And if there's a ghost in your house, it's probably already heard the shit because, you know, they got hookups or something. I don't know what they fucking do. Just don't haunt me. Flip it. All right, y'all, that's going to do it for today's video. Make sure you give me a thumbs up or drop a comment. Tell me what you think of Kanye West and Kid Cudi, Kid C, Ghost. If you've heard it, if you have not heard it, like I said, way better than Ye, production-wise, easily. And there's great performances on here overall. And it's a good, solid project. Not the best that Kanye has dropped so far, but number two in the slot, easily. And, like, I, Ye is probably going to be the worst project out of everything that he drops 
It's, it's looking that way, y'all. I don't know what's going on with Ye, but hey, Ye, it, like I said, it ain't your day. Previous video is on the side as well as my latest single. Check that out. Show us some love. And as always, Twitter, Facebook, SoundCloud, Instagram. Links in the description below. And subscribe. Button on the screen. Button below. Wooly reviews twice a week as well as the gaming videos. Got a new God of War coming up. Another one's around the corner. As well as let's talk about the shit. Everything else. Check the info below. And you know what it is. So until next time, I take my leave. Granddaughter. Kanye West. Kid Cudi, Kid C Ghost. It's an overall, it's a good project. Not amazing, but a lot better than Ye. So that's what we can say. And what's next? Uh, Nas? Is Nas next? I ain't heard shit from Nas. Nas been quiet as fuck. He better drop. Kanye, you promised, nigga. You already three for three. Don't fuck up with the Nas shit, because that's got to be fire. It, it can't go wrong. It's Nas. Come on. I'm out of here.